Games between Liverpool and Arsenal have provided the Premier League with some truly magical moments. But the meeting in November was a relatively tame affair in comparison and only came to life after a first-half disagreement between the managers. 1-0 down at the break, Arsenal conceded three more in the second half, a result that took Liverpool up to second while the Gunners remained fifth. Chelsea's lead was down to just a point as Manchester City ramped up their title defence. Wolves continued to impress. Manchester United were eighth after Michael Carrick guided them to a draw at Chelsea. Just three points separated seven teams in the bottom half. Brentford were still enjoying their debut season among England's elite, but Leeds continued to struggle. One of the most passionate affairs in English football helped to launch December's fixtures, the Merseyside Derby. Everton were looking for light in the darkness, be calmed in the bottom half without a win in seven. Liverpool had lost just once all season, but the short hop to Goodison was fraught with danger. It was almost five years since the Reds' last success on the other side of Stanley Park. Form goes out the window in these sorts of games. It's about what team wants it more. Uh, our team will, will, will fight harder for the win, um, and that'll be evident. For Rafa Benitez, a strange reunion with the club he once guided to Champions League glory, and the golfing class soon became clear. Here's Robertson, and here is Jordan Henderson! That is a beautiful finish! Fabulous control from the Liverpool skipper, who beats the badge and dances. One back by Thiago, shifted hurriedly by Henderson for Mo Salah, who's in on goal here for Liverpool. And Salah scores, of course he does. Liverpool are rampant. As if to underline the unpredictable nature of the rivalry, Everton pulled a goal back through Damare Gray. But the respite was short-lived as Liverpool went on to secure their biggest league victory at Goodison since 1982. Coleman caught on it by Salah, and Salah is off and running now. Catch him if you can. Mo Salah! Brilliant! There is no catching him. The man is electric. Robertson. Shot are twisting. Diogo Jota, oh, belting goal. What a fabulous hit. Diogo Jota, hotter and hotter. The Everton crowd made its feelings clear. While Klopp was savouring the occasion, his beleaguered counterpart was taking the kind of flack that those who appointed him would find difficult to ignore. At Villa Park, Manchester City recorded Pep Guardiola's 150th Premier League win, a milestone reached in 204 matches faster than any other manager. As they ended Steven Gerrard's stirring start with Aston Villa, Bernardo Silva's goal shortly before the break bore all the hallmarks of a team with complete faith in its own abilities. Bernardo Silva, an absolutely brilliant counter-attacking goal from Manchester City. Manchester United's new interim manager watched from the stands for the visit of Arsenal. Another fixture steeped in tradition and its fair share of controversy, this latest meeting would be no exception. United felt Emil Smith-Rowe's opener shouldn't have stood, with David De Gea flat out on the goal line facing away from the play. Neither the Gunners nor the officials showed any sympathy. Bruno Fernandes improved the home side's mood before the break, and no prizes for guessing who struck next. Rashford playing it in! His 801st career goal wasn't far behind, a penalty that clinched a 3-2 victory. As United moved to within three points of fourth place West Ham, Michael Carrick announced his departure, leaving the club he'd joined from Tottenham back in 2006. After 14 games, only one team in the league was still waiting for its first win. It had been eight weeks since Newcastle's £305 million Saudi-backed takeover. 
Thanks to Nick Pope's fumble and Callum Wilson's predatory instinct, Burnley were beaten. A long last something on the pitch to celebrate. Games were coming thick and fast for West Ham and Chelsea. As well as their Premier League schedule, both were still involved in the League Cup and the European competitions. If they were flagging, it didn't show in a pulsating encounter. Silva has found the net and Chelsea lead in the East End. Jorginho's back pass Bowen in West again. There was no respite as Mason Mount steered Chelsea back into the lead. Before the Hammers levelled again early in the second half through Jared Bowen, no stranger to the score sheet. The same couldn't be said for match winner Artur Masuaku. His first league goal after more than five years with the club arrived in bed. Oh. got in! And West Ham are three and a half minutes away from a steal! How has that happened? That defeat for the leaders Chelsea was their second of the season and left the door open to Liverpool later in the day. A chance it appeared they might squander at Wolves with the scores still all square in stoppage time. But that's Divock Origi territory. The substitute took Liverpool top in the 94th minute. Not for long, a vicarage road Manchester City soon had Watford chasing shadows. Pep Guardiola said his team reached their highest standard. Below the top three, Tottenham have been quietly but effectively going about their business since the appointment of Andrew Victory over Norwich, who tasted defeat for the first time since Dean Smith took charge, the beginning of a hugely damaging month for his Canaries. A huge figure on Merseyside, Steven Gerrard set foot inside Anfield with unprecedented intentions to see his beloved Liverpool lose. Gerrard's Aston Villa have won three of his first four games, but their afternoon took a turn for the worse when Tyro Mings bundled over Mo Salah in the box. The Egyptian made sure his fellow Liverpool legend Gerrard would leave empty-handed, keeping Liverpool second, a point behind Manchester City. As December wore on, the fixture list was increasingly disrupted by a number of postponements caused by COVID-19 outbreaks at Premier League clubs. By the time Leicester City hosted Liverpool's final game of 2021, Jurgen Klopp's players had added to their Aston Villa win by beating Newcastle and drawing at Tottenham. Against the Foxes, they were desperate to make up lost ground on the leaders. All appeared to be going to plan early on when Wilfred Ndidi conceded a penalty. Mosa saved. There's a follow-up. Missed as well by Salah. Schmeichel makes the save, and the Leicester fans celebrating like they've scored. Liverpool were made to pay as Leicester had an ace up their sleeve. Introduced as a substitute, Adimola Luckman used just his fourth touch of the ball to rifle home the Foxes' second-half decider. The former Everton forward had inflicted Liverpool's second defeat of the season, which left them six points adrift of Manchester City. Well, I think uh, obviously it was not a good night for us because in the, this moment I think uh, it will be really important to win, especially get this 20 point. But uh, it was not the case. You have to accept and uh, look forward. We all know cities is so far a bit, uh, but um, still everything is possible, and we will fight until the end. 24 hours later, at home to Brighton. Chelsea had the chance to overtake Liverpool and in the process keep pace with the reigning champions. Romelu Lukaku's header justified his first top flight start in two months, establishing a 28th minute lead, which felt increasingly tenuous as the game wore on, but was still intact going into second half stoppage time. Lalana with a nice touch, so too well back. A little nutmeg to find Kukurea, and the header is in! No more than they deserve! A third draw in four matches for Chelsea, who dropped 11 points from a possible 24. All eyes then on a venue barely six miles from Stamford Bridge, where Manchester City could now see out the year in style by moving eight points clear of their closest challengers. Phil Foden edged them past a typically spirited Brentford, clinching City's 10th successive league win. The 
two previous occasions City have finished December leading the way in 2011-12 and 2017-18, they went on to win the title. The three sides that began the month at the bottom of the table still occupied the relegation zone. But Newcastle had gained four points and would have money to spend in January's transfer window. No team in Premier League history had failed to win the title when starting the year so far in front as Manchester City. On January the 1st, they could extend their advantage to 11 points with an 11th successive top flight win. But hosts Arsenal were in fine form too, under former City assistant coach Mikel Arteta. Yeah, they're doing, they're doing really well. I mean, obviously, their manager is someone that we know really well. And I would say they pr probably play similar, similar type of football that we are playing. It's a task again, it's a challenge again, and uh, hopefully we can we can start the year on our front foot. Arsenal had lost their previous nine games against City, and they would be without Mikel Arteta after the Spaniard had tested positive for COVID-19. Kieran Tierney. Bukayo Saka, Arsenal ahead. It's a headline start for 2022. Bukayo Saka launches the new year. The Gunners, who'd had a penalty claim waved away in the first half, were doubly frustrated after the break when referee Stuart Atwell overturned his original decision and awarded City a spot kick. Arsenal defender Gabriel was booked for scuffing up the ground ahead of the penalty, an action he would later regret. Mores fires it in, and the champions are level amid massive Arsenal disgruntlement. Gabriel's going to walk here. Gabriel has fouled Jesus on halfway. A second yellow card in a trice. And Arsenal, having been a goal up, now find themselves all square and a man down. As the game moved into stoppage time, 10-man Arsenal were doing their utmost to hold out for the draw. De Bruyne lifted up towards Rodri, hit by Laporte and squeezed in by Rodri. And City have snatched it in stoppage time. And that is what champions do. West Ham was still challenging for a top four finish and the glamour of Champions League football. Against Crystal Palace, the Hammers were three to the good by half time. They held on to win, despite a late comeback from Patrick Vieira's side. The following day, Manchester City's two nearest challengers met in West London. Jurgen Klopp wasn't there after a suspected positive Covid test, while Thomas Tuchel left out Chelsea's record signing Romelu Lukaku following comments the Belgian had made in an interview for Italian television. But against that backdrop, the two sides produced one of the most thrilling encounters of this or any other Premier League season. Sadio Mane opened the scoring when he pounced on a mistake from Trevor Chalaba. And then Mo Salah doubled Liverpool's advantage with another moment of individual brilliance. Alexander Arnold is a Super Bowl for Mo Salah, and Salah's wriggling in and scoring. As deft and expert as the Egyptian is, week on week on week, just so nimble, just so bright. Chelsea nil, Liverpool two. With half-time approaching, Chelsea struck back. A spectacular volley from Matteo Kovacic reducing the deficit to one. Before Christian Pulisic raced clear to equalise in first half stoppage time. Four goals in a breathless first half, 
neither could breach their opponent's defence in the second. And at the final whistle, Manchester City's lead was 10 points over Chelsea and 11 on Liverpool. Ralph Rangnick's unbeaten start as Manchester United's interim manager came to an end after João Moutinho struck the only goal of the game to give Wolves a deserved victory at Old Trafford. It left United 22 points behind their city rivals and took the old gold up to eighth. The following match week, Chelsea headed north. Defeat to Manchester City and their chances of catching the leaders would look increasingly slim. In a corresponding fixture the season before, Chelsea had defeated the champions-elect 2-1. But Lightning wasn't about to strike twice at the Etihad. De Bruyne shifting away from N'Golo Conte. Kevin De Bruyne! Oh, wow, that's brilliant! That is magnificent! Game-changer! Points of world-class difference! No one stops that! A 12th consecutive victory for City. A successful defence of their title seemed to be written in the stars. Philippe could debut as Steven Gerrard's side fought back from two goals down to draw a pulsating duel with Manchester United at Villa Park. Time finally ran out for Rafa Benitez. Everton were beaten at Carrow Road and the Spaniard was sacked the following day. After a promising start to the season, the Merseyside Blues had lost nine of their last 12 league games under Benitez, a disastrous run of results that saw them drop from 4th to 15th and at risk of becoming involved in the relegation battle. Benitez wasn't the only manager to part company with his club in January. Following Watford's 3-0 home defeat to Norwich, which saw the Hornets replace the Canaries in the relegation zone, Claudio Ranieri was dismissed. He'd been in charge for just three and a half months. Manchester City's 12-game winning streak was brought to a halt on the south coast against Southampton. Kyle Walker-Peters gave the home side an early lead. But Imeric Laporte's equaliser meant that for the second time in the season, the two sides shared the points. By the end of January, it was looking increasingly like a two-horse race. Liverpool's win at Crystal Palace saw them nine points behind City with a game in hand. It was all set for an anxious final three and a half months of the season at the bottom, with two of the promoted teams hoping to avoid an immediate return to the championship.